Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about it again. Uh, there has been more developments in the continuing saga of the solvent trap. Today, we actually had an opportunity to talk again to the uh, ATF field agent who is assisting us. That is Agent Montana. And let's spend a few minutes today talking about the ATF gives us their first final answer on solvent traps. Okay, before we get rolling, you guys know the drill. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button down below. If you want to stay up to date on the issues related to your Second Amendment rights or the solvent traps, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Click the little bell logo if you want to be notified when we post new videos. And most importantly, let's keep the comments and discussions coming. That's going to make sure we get these videos out to more lawful and responsible gun owners like yourself. Okay, I'll be honest with you, when I did my first video on solvent traps back in August, never did I imagine in my wildest dreams that this would be the fourth or fifth video that we end up doing about it. Let's do a quick historical perspective of how we got to where we are today. In August, we did a video. We knew that some of you were buying these solvent traps. They were coming from companies such as Diversified Machine and several other places. They were eerily similar to suppressors and could be easily milled out. At that time, we said, hey, uh, don't do that. If you are going to do it, please fill out a Form 1. Uh, if you're doing it without going through the appropriate ATF channels, you're going to be in violation of state and federal law. Now, we then learned, of course, that the ATF did start sniffing around on this and started raiding some of these manufacturers. And we recently learned that a company named Diversified Machine was raided. And the reason we learned about that is that many otherwise lawful and responsible gun owners started getting nasty little letters from the ATF telling them, hey, you may be in violation of federal law. So well, that led to another video, which is, hey, is the ATF really coming after these people who purchased these solvent traps? Now, we had a lot of questions because we saw what the ATF was saying in this particular letter. So we then took it upon ourselves to contact uh, the ATF directly. And after a very long, circuitous route all around, zigzagging around the country, we actually ended up talking to one of the ATF attorneys who happens to be right here in Seattle. And we put everyone into three categories of, of individuals. Those who purchased these solvent traps and didn't do anything with them other than just leave them in the original format that they got them. Those who did purchase them, convert them, but never did any ATF paperwork. And again, we kind of knew what was up with those folks. And then there was this third very unique category that had purchased them, converted them, but had gone through all the appropriate ATF channels. Uh, the Form 1, the tax stamp, got ATF approval, and even they were receiving these nasty little letters. Now, we were told at that time, and we did a video on that also, directly from counsel, Mr. Tibbetts, for the ATF, that is their attorney, that people, no matter which category that you fell into, you were being asked to give these uh, components back, and we gave the reasons why. And in a very short nutshell, it was because their beef was with diversified machine, not so much necessarily with the purchasers. Okay, so then that led us to this effort where I was contacted by a client who we are going under the name of Aaron. And Aaron was a guy who back in 2016 bought one of these things, milled it out, but did all the appropriate paperwork and had actually received ATF blessings back in 2016. So he had lawfully owned this thing for almost six years at this point, And yet he was being asked to give it back too. When I explained to him what counsel for ATF had told us, Mr. Tibbetts, um, my client, Aaron, was like, fine, I don't want to deal with it anymore. The thing's kind of a piece of junk anyways. Let's just go ahead and surrender it. Easy, easy to do, right? So we contact the ATF field office in Seattle. And, of course, that led us to a video where we had to talk about this long, horrible process where we literally had to educate each ATF person along the way. We eventually got ourselves to an Agent Montana, who is the on-duty field agent right now in the Puget Sound region. I spoke to him yesterday, and you, some of you may have seen yesterday's video, and he said, hey, listen, for Aaron's situation, if he's got a completed Form 1, that's all I need to see. I don't need him to turn the thing in. Now, I directed him back to the email, the verbatim response that I'd gotten from their lawyers and said, you know, you need to reconcile these two statements because I got a lawyer saying, yeah, he needs to turn it in. And I got an agent saying, no, we're good as long as he has a Form 1, which I know Aaron has a good Form 1. I've seen it myself. 
Today, around 3.30 in the afternoon, I had an opportunity to yet again talk with Agent Montana. And this is what he told me. From his perspective, as the agent who is enforcing this, all Aaron needs to do is show him a valid Form 1. And at that point, there will be nothing else. He is not being asked to surrender it. He is not being asked to relinquish it. He is not being asked to provide evidence of its destruction. Now, I find it odd that an ATF agent needs a copy of a Form 1 when they presumably have a copy of the Form 1 on file, since they themselves blessed Aaron with the ability to actually use this device. But that's where we sit as of today, approximately 6 p.m., Thursday, January 27th. So for those who are living in the Puget Sound region, in which Agent Montana might be the one that you're dealing with, and you have, in fact, completed a Form 1, it would appear for you all we have to do is get Agent Montana a copy of that Form 1, and everything is good to go. Now, I have recognized that a lot of people have been viewing these videos from other places in the country. And this is one of the things that I have learned. I have dealt with the ATF in the past. I have never dealt with them to this depth. And it, it, it is an incredibly discouraging uh, process. Um, because if you think they move the goalpost, that, that's an understatement. You can talk to five different agents and get five different answers. And so what I'm saying is, is this is the communication I'm having with an agent here in King County, Washington on January 27th. If you live in another state, I spoke to a gentleman today in Bozeman, Montana, um, who wanted some advice. And I was like, you really should call the ATF office in Montana. I'm sure they're going to probably give you different answers. And I believe that you all out there will find different answers depending on where you live. Do I think you should be contacting the ATF on your own? Well, that's a judgment call, but I will say this. The one group of people I have been really worried about, and I will continue to warn this, is if you purchase these things and you did convert them and you filled out no ATF paperwork, you are the one category of individuals that I do believe the ATF may have further interest. For those who just purchased them and didn't do anything with them, for those who purchased them but jumped through all the appropriate ATF channels, um, I think that ATF's beef is going to be with Diversified Machine and some of the other manufacturers, not with the actual purchaser. So there it is, your daily update on the continuing saga of the ATF and solvent traps. Listen, I know you're going to have more questions about this, and if you do or have any questions related to anything about your Second Amendment rights, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com, or of course you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.